Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome to my very first tutorial. Today I am going to attempt to teach you how to use paint tool sci like a pro in I don't know how long, let's see how fast I can do it. Okay, so the first thing you would like to do is to make a new canvas. So to do that, you go to File, New, and uh, this is the settings I like to use. I like to go uh, 3200 width and 1800 height pixels because it's really good for wallpapers and I, I just like landscape stuff more than portraits and you want your resolution to be at least 300 I know it says 72 as a default change it to 300 or if you're feeling feeling a little risque you can go down to 600 for high resolution stuff okay and just press ok when you're ready okay so brushes so the default brushes are like pen brush pencil eraser buckets airbrush stuff like that stuff like spread and okami brushes they're custom made brushes which you can edit in these settings here I'm, I'm not really sure what these settings are I'm not too I'm not a hundred percent confident in explaining them but you can play around with them and see how you like them here you can change the texture of the texture of the brush itself and here you can change the texture of the canvas itself okay so here the brush sizes range from 0 0.7 which is like super ultra thin that you can barely see and like 500 which is the max which is super humongous and then up here is the brush hardness so square means it's like super hard edge and then like this I don't know what do you call that arcing thing is like really soft edges so if you want a soft airbrushy kind of look you go with this and if you want to like a really solid brush then you use this and if you want to in between then you just okay so some shortcuts that i find useful is that if you hold space and drag the canvas you can move the canvas around to wherever you want if you press page up you can zoom in if you press page down you can zoom out if you press delete you can rotate the canvas anti-clockwise and if you press n you can rotate it clockwise right and if you press Control Z, that's undo button. If you press Control Y, that's a redo button. And if you draw something and you want to flip it over, press H and that flips the canvas for you. Also, if you have something selected with the Select Brush tool, you can transform it by pressing Control T and moving it around. You can resize it, you can stretch it and squish it. You can rotate it, and if you want to keep proportions, you hold shift while you resize or whatever you want. Press enter to confirm your change, press ctrl z to uh, undo your change, and press ctrl d to deselect everything. This is the color wheel. The color wheel helps you choose the color that you want. This is the hues, so if you want a pink hue, you can go towards the pink. You, you can make it like really bright or really dark or really saturated or really desaturated it's all up to you it's all here it's all good all right you see over here i have all the stuff that i find useful and will come in handy if you want to get rid of something or you want to add something go down to windows over here and choose stuff you know there's the hb slide there's a color mixer if you want it or you can just get rid of whatever you don't want if you don't want to use the shortcuts like zoom in and zoom out and rotate then you can use this right over here you can zoom in by using the, sc the the scroll thingy or angle it the way you want or if you want to s put it back to default you can just press those square thingies and it'll set you right back filters here at the top will give you the option of hue and saturation or brightness and contrast hue and saturation allows you to change the hue of the colors on the canvas saturation makes it more saturated or less saturated and luminous is kind of like brightness and darkness kind of way. You can uncheck and recheck the preview button if you want to preview or not preview it. It's, up, it's all up to you, man. And if you go down to brightness and contrast, you can change the brightness of the whole picture or darkness. You can make it more contrasting or less contrasting, if that makes sense. And color depth, I have no idea what this is. Now the stabilizer tool up here is really useful. If you have zero stabilizer, then it gives you zero stability and it, you have crabby lines and shit like that. Now if you turn it all the way up to S7, which is like super stable, number seven, it gives you a super stable line. Oh my god, look how smooth that is. Yeah, great for line art, great for line art. This program has layers. Layers are super helpful. If you want to make a new layer, press new layer and just you draw on the new layer. If you want to move layers, just drag it to where you want it to go in. 
Depending on what is on top will depend on what shows in front in the picture. Now, if you want to merge layers, there's two options. You can transform down layer, which takes whatever layer is on top and moves it down. Or you can just cut it, which gets rid of the layer entirely and basically merges it all into one. There's the delete button and there's a clear button where you can clear everything on the page because you totally want to do that, don't you? Now up here, over here where it says preserve, opacity, and clipping group, that's really helpful. If you press clipping group on a layer that is above another layer, so let's say this is your base layer and you want to shade, so let's grab a darker blue and we'll shade this in right here. It won't go over the the base layer, if you know what I mean. This is the area that it's colored in, and it won't go over it. Now, if you press preserve opacity, it does the same thing as the clipping group, but it does it to the layer that the opacity is on. So if you want to change it to red, you can do that. Like a boss, like a boss. Now up here is the mode. The mode layer is great because it it basically acts like a you know, Photoshop kind of filter kind of thing. So if you go to multiply, it does that. You go to screen, it does that. You go to overlay, it does that. It goes to little balls, it does that. It goes shake, it does that. And the binary color is pretty shit. Last but not least is the line work layer. Line work layer is for people who don't know how to draw using their hand because they're really bad at hand eye coordination. Oh! Or if they don't have a pen and the you know digital tablet and they only have a mouse to work with so it's all right you know and choose the curve tool and basically you just put down all the points of interest that you want on the screen now double tap to end the line all right now if you hold control you'll have points of interest here now you can drag these points of interest into the place that you want and you can you can make your own line art out of it so the curve tool will will automatically curve the line for you uh, depending on you know where the points of interest are and this straight line tool will just give you straight lines like this like ziggy zag Goku hair yo Goku hair this pen tool allows you to draw freely and still give you the option to you know manipulate the lines the way you want it to and there you have it you are now the master the ultimate genius master professional level you can you're the ceo you're you own paint tool sai you are the creator no you're you're the money maker you are the person who invented this pro you're so good you don't even know how good you are thank you for watching chris If you have any question about this tutorial and you know if if you're not clear about something or I've missed out something that you want to know about please leave it down in the comments also leave your suggestion for my next tutorial if you would like me to explain something I mean I'm not really that good at it but I'll try my best I'll try my best and if you like watching speed paints and commentated speed paints cuz I make commentated speed paints wink wink nudge nudge check out my videos on my channel and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I love you. Bye-bye.